It's an exciting Monday afternoon. We are here once again to take a look at issues as it affects you and I. In Africa, on the program Africa Discourse, I am Wilson of Marshall. Today is all about neocolonialism and African politics, understanding the narrative. You might have heard about some persons, some authors, uh, uh, telling us how Europe, so to speak, underdeveloped Africa. Like saying that the impact of Europe or the impact of the Western world is still being felt in everything that we do. Even in our politics, people are like wondering, are you really sure about that assertion or allegation? The way Africans choose to run their politics, is that the norm? What do we lack in understanding the narrative of politicking? Well, I mean politics, I mean the way politics should be practiced. With me here in the studio to uh, uh, throw insight into this discourse, I'd like to start my introduction from my extreme left. Let me introduce a very young man, a vibrant youth, Alex Obi. Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. All right. So very close to Alex, he's a legal practitioner and environmentalist, but local and international politics is well grounded Jeremy to welcome Barista Chima Williams. Barista, welcome to the show. Thank you, Wilson. Yes, they say once a journalist, always a journalist. Once uh, a youth president, always a youth president. You know, uh, once, is it scouts? Yeah, once the head of scout, always the head of scout, an entrepreneur, a businessman, you just name it, a politician, he's all encompassing. Jeremy to welcome Honorable and I say it do, but the man I love so, so much. Welcome, Honorable. Thank I appreciate you. your coming. Thank you. All right. Anybody very close to uh, Honorable, and I say it do, but is one vibrant lawyer, a political analyst, an activist, local and international politics. It's very grand. Join me to welcome Barrister Matthew Edegase. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me, Wilson. All right. I'm going to start off with you, Barrister Matthew neo-colonialism and African politics. Point of the opinion that it is what we inherited from our colonial masters. That is what we are depicting in our politics. Take a look at Egypt. Take a look at Tunisia, Algeria. You just name it. Even our own country, Nigeria. They're like saying that is what we carry over. That is what we are depicting and exhibiting even in our political terrain. How do you view this? That assertion is not correct. If we had com uh, continued with what we inherited from the colonialists, we would have been better off by now. What we did was to adulterate whatever legacy they bequeathed us. The democracy they gave to us is not what we are practicing. During their time, the election they conducted, we were free and fair. Even though they were limited, uh, Elected, elected position. But those elected positions were, the, there was credibility in the process of electing those people during the days of Herbert Macaulay and those early nationalists who were the first to be elected in Africa. They were all entitled and they had the opportunity of being elected under a very credible electoral process. There was no rigging then, there was no toggling, no manipulation of figures, no frustration of results. In fact, those who were not qualified as stipulated by the regulation then were never able to manipulate their way through. So, if anything good should be said of the colonialists, it was the due process. Things being done properly and in an orderly manner. There was no shortcut to anything. Everything you have there was earned on the merits. Colonialists patronize merits. They patronize the best among the, the people they, they colonized. The best brain were patronized by them and given position of responsibility. There was never a time in a colonial classroom arrangement the worst student and, uh, became uh, the, uh, the, having the best graduate student. No. All right. There was no manipulation. No if manipulation. you fail, you fail. You fail. Okay, I, I, I will come back to you. Honorable Agarase Dubo, why he was making his point, you smile. <laughs> Even by Sir Chima Williams giggled. Okay, now let me come to you, Honorable. Do you have a different view from his own opinion? I think I want to agree with your position. Mm. So very basically, neocolonialism is, is, a, is, is a continuous tense of colonialism. And very basically, these guys, even though we had a flag independence, which was just a flag independence, 
most countries that were colonized, they still had a string that they were still holding. And they, 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 they have come in in various forms. Even, from, even at the time, most of the countries became independent. They were just it was using the word indep independence was like, you know, literally because even though they were sovereign, but they still had control over them. So they, 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 you know, Africa is still not too independent because everything we have ever done since independence, so to speak, those who were, who were, who were going to fight these colonial masters, they were toppled all. Kumar, Secretary, Nyerere, all toppled because they dared to say, no, we cannot tolerate a situation whereby you give us on the one hand, on the other hand, you are taking it back. Mm -hmm. So very honestly, for me, where we are now is a continuation mm -hmm. of colonization. We, we, we are still suffering from, I agree with my brother that the colonial masters had eyes for excellence, but then they chose those who were going to do their bidding. Mm -hmm. They chose them. And of course, you know, every country that ever had independence, except Ghana, every other country, they handed over power to those persons who they could use to renegotiate. All right. Who they, they could, could use to, to renegotiate. renegotiate independent okay. of those countries. So very basically, they still had a very strong relationship that most countries today, the impoverished nation of Africa today, is because of the way our colonial masters Look at the French countries, for instance. France is still there. The, the Anglo Anglophone countries are fine, but in the French, in the France Francophone Francophone. countries, France is still there. This oh, guy. Right. So every, every government there is still taking the cue from, from France. So I, I still believe that. Yes, I agree that they had eyes for excellence. I agree with that. But basically, they also, they also understood the persons they needed to continue with their act of uh, oppression. Act of oppression. Yes. I'll come back to you on that. Barrister Chairman Williams, do you have a divergent view? <laughs> you see, when we talk of neocolonialism, what are we actually talking about? Is colonialism through indirect means? Okay? And um, I, when my brother you know, was talking about excellence, who determines what is excellence? You see, the colonial masters, the, the, when they colonized us, it was brazen. Okay? So they directly dictated what happens in our political, social, economic, cultural arena. But when they left, they left their strings that all African countries, including Nigeria, were still somehow tied to the, you know, mechanisms of our former colonial masters. Okay, so when you talk of new colonialism, of course, first is that the political system that we operate in Africa, is it indigenous to us? It's not our indigenous practice. It is borrowed. And who did we borrow those cultures from, those political cultures from? Our colonial masters. So how can you now say that they have left? you are free. We have flag independence agreed, but when you have flag independence, you do not have economic and political independence. You are still dependent. You are still a dependent nation. And once you are still dependent on the mechanism and you know, directives from another country, that country is colonizing you through a different means. Let's, let's look at you know, instances. Now, Nigeria is an oil-producing nation. Does Nigeria determine the price that her oil is sold for? No. The major operators, the multinational, the major operators of the oil industry in Nigeria, where do they come from? From Europe and America. And they decide what happens. And our oil is the main thing, you know, where we derive our economic power from. And another nation controls, you know, how much we sell, the quantum that we sell, and who we sell to. And does that not determine our political life? Okay. Because he who pays the piper dictates the tune. All right, Barrister. So, 
in that. And this is replicated in almost all the African countries. Just name them. Without exception, even the Ghana that we talk about, Ghana is only trying, you know, to stand on its own. There's still the push is still there very much. Okay? They're still very poor. Okay? Still so they are they are they are gold who controls they are gold. They are cocoa who controls it. You know, you you export your cocoa and it comes in, in way of chocolate. Are they exporting? Are they not processing? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, so, so we'll come to that. So that is that is you know mm. the colonial strings mm. that you know we are still attached to. Mm. All right. And when it comes to that, you, you, that's a very you good see, why they're not who first they're not yeah. Yeah. You see, you see, because you, you know, see, okay. you see, yeah, you see, 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 African countries line up to go to China, to go to Japan, to go to London, go to Germany, go to US. What are they going to do? Good question. I'll come back to you, Barrister Chima William. <coughs> Alex, what are your opinions? Um, uh, neo-colonialism is um, colonialism in disguise. You know, like I've been hearing issues like flag independence. Uh -huh. That independence without total control, where, where they still have political and economic control through the mechanisms. But I, I this would not, I would sit on the fence in this issue. Uh, my colleague said something about uh, the system of government that we, you know, learnt from our colonial master. But the truth is that if you want to copy something, you have to copy it properly before you can, you would have the right to say it's not working. Is this how democracy is practiced in the US or in the UK? No. Issues of rigging, issues of abuse of rule of law and all that. Also, it is also very important to note that at the point the, the choices that the colonial master made at that time were not necessarily for the long-term good or development of their colonies. They were most of the time exploitative. They had an ulterior motive. And so the people that, it's, it was very clear even in, in this country, you, you, you had the southern region that had a lot of vibrant politicians, those who actually fought for independence. But the British probably thought that these guys uh, we are just too intelligent and too independent for their liking. And so what do they do? They, you know, arrange the politics in such a way that it will favor those who would be pliable to their needs and demand. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say I don't subscribe to uh, completely uh, passing the bulk of the blame at the feet of the colonial master. Yes, I also think that uh, we also have our own part to play. Also, you will see that the elites in this country have, are also practicing a form of colonialism on the masses. You know, a form of, you know, alienating the rest of the society from the overall wealth of the country. So I think it's 50-50. 50-50. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll come back to you on that. Uh, Barrister Matthew, you've heard their opinions and, of course, their view because they gave uh, their own uh, <laughs> a stand in this discourse. Now, Barrister Juma talked about some African countries. Even before election, you get to see them paying, so to speak, whether in court image, uh, home, so to speak, to go to America, go to Germany, go to Britain, just go to uh, uh, these great countries to say, look, I'm vying for some position, we need your support. Do you think that is another form of colonialism as against your stand? My first reaction was a response to the question you posed. Mm. On the subject of new colonialism, mm. new colonialism by its very nature is something, a different form of colonialism. Mm. It's still colonialism. One is physical, the other one is, uh, is of the mind. Spiritual. No, spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> so meta-colonialism. So the problem with Africans, or the, the, yeah, the former colonial territories, mm. is anchored on the leadership of those countries. India was also colonized, just like Africa. Today, India is a, is a world power, be it nuclear science, be it uh, technological, whatever, advancement. There is no physical rope 
tying Africa down is the mental rope that the leadership have turned themselves into. They are the ones tying down their own people from advancing. If we keep saying the colonialists did this, they did that, they did that, look, we all have different backgrounds, even as human beings. Mm. Environment, family, and all of that, peer group influence. You chose to be what you want to be. There is independence of decision that God gave to humanity. A slave can excel and become a master if he's focused. Mm. Africa cannot continue to play this alibi that we were once colonized. China was equally not even free from colonization. They fought for their freedom. Most nations, were, America was also colonized. At a point, Spain was conquered by the Turks, the Turks and all of that. But then, today, those people have they've, they've put that behind them. My friend was speaking about the detail, the price with which our communities are sold to them. Within our local market, if you are a seller of a commodity and you go to the market, the market has a price. If you take your yam as a farmer to the market, you take your goat to the market, there is, a, there is a market price, even in our local setting. You can't bring your goat and sell it for 500 million naira. Mm. <laughs> they will tell you this goat, is not, that is not the price. So globally, the price mechanism is not, it's not actually the function of one nation fixing it. Because America also has oil. So Russia has oil. Uh, the Arabs have oil. They all sell at that global market. If you do not want to sell at that price that is available at the market, you have an option. You have to add value. Which African nations are not doing? We are, we are very quick to want to harvest. We don't want to produce. The productive idea is what is lacking among our leadership. We can't have gold in your territory. Then you, ex you export the raw gold. Definitely, you are, you are walking into the market uh, control. But if you process this gold into juries, which are very expensive, the finished product, you will not detect the product of that final outcome, the part of that final product. We are not doing that. We are basically marketing, exporting raw materials. A raw material seller is not having absolute control of the final value of the product. It's the person that adds value that is the king in the market. Okay. All right. So very yeah. basically, the raw material person has no has no idea. No, you say I am. No, very basically, when you when you when you export raw materials, the primary person, mm -hmm. it has to get to the second. That's what Nkrumah was trying, fight, fighting for, trying to get the Africans to get united and form a front. They don't want oh. form a front because most of these raw materials are from here. Mm -hmm. Form a front within which you can now dictate many things. Trade within Africa. Yes. You make so more money. we can do. That kind of thing. But the, 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 the colonial masters fought that <laughs> and showed that we're not united. The African unity, I mean, they, they, are, they are on their own. They shared Africa. They shared, they shared along the way they wanted to administer Africa. And they ensured that people like, you know, Secretary, Jerusalem Yerere, Kwame Nkrumah, and all that, who were determined to say, Africa, let us take charge of our destiny. But they now saw that, and they said, no, you can't. And they kept on holding this string. But let me, let, me, let me say this, my brother. The raw materials that we produce in Africa, we can, if we unite, if Africa unites, we can say, okay, fine. The gold in Ghana, for instance, the diamond in Zimbabwe, we can sit down and say, Africa, Africa, let's get united. Let's bring, let's now form a common front. I agree with my brother when he said, okay, why is Ghana not produced? Okay, not even Nigeria, we, we have to go here. In Africa, we're, we're, no, we're, we're exporting yes. petroleum products. Yes. Well, we should be exporting. Yes. So, I do basically, for that. we should, I mean, we have refineries, so we have four or five. <laughs> or, <laughs> Who are you paying for that? They're not working. <laughs> They're not working. So, we take our crude oil from here. We send to Wilson's country. Wilson, you know, you, know, you will now refine the oil and bring back to us. And we now buy. And you determine, like he said, you determine the price. Oh, you added value. But if we if we sit down here and say all of us in Africa, 56 countries in Africa, we sit down and say, gentlemen, now there is cocoa in this country, there is oil here, there is this there. Let us sit down. Let us form an African unity. So that we can now also have a have, be a block. 
So you cannot control, I mean, if, if, you, if you cannot control the end product, you can't, you can't, you can't shout. Because if you send me oil, if you send me, if you send me cocoa, for instance, like you said, chocolate and Novartine and Milo and everything, of course, when I finish, I will determine the price. No the companies. And most of those companies, I mean, look at Shell, for instance, what Shell did. We also know what happened to our brother, Sarah Wewa. All these issues, when you, when you try to rise up against these people, they will try to determine your existence. Whether, you want, whether they want to kill you or they don't want to send you on exile. Mm -hmm. So very honestly, I think it's not too late for Africa, actually. It's not too late for us because I agree with you, we must get, we should stop this issue of nationalism. Let us be conscious politically. Oh, right. People are, I mean, once you have political consciousness mm -hmm. and social consciousness, you can, you can understand that, that these are big brothers who are cheating us. Somebody said, somebody said, I think, I don't know who said, who said that now, that we are, we are, our people have also colonized us. Yeah. Our, lead, our leaders yeah. have colonized us. Yeah. Because the way they rule, I mean, lead, not, not rule, the way they lead us, mm. they, 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 they have kept us in, 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 in poverty. Size, yes. yes. Okay. So these are issues that, you know, I mean, All right. we, we, are, we are also suffering colonialism from, 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 from within. Yeah. Like, uh, okay, now, there are some notable names. Uh, you've mentioned some already. Get to hear uh, late Robert Mugabe was one that stood firm and said no to colonialism, we know how the story ended. The country, according to many reports, wasn't better off. We heard also about Kenneth Kaunda. Zambia must be free after finding the colonial masters. Where is Zambia today? Are you still going to help the blame of the colonial masters? Yeah, you see, if you want to solve a problem, without understanding the dimensions of that problem, you will never solve it. Okay, at best you will be given palliative treatment. There is no way you are going to solve African, you know, leadership problem without talking about colonialism and neocolonialism. You can never solve it. Let us be honest with ourselves. Okay? Of course, and when we are talking about neocolonialism, we are not exculpating our own indigenous people. But if you don't know where the rain started beating you, you will not know where it stops beating you. And that is, you know, the analysis that we are trying to place here. Now, how come that Europe that participated <laughs> in the demarcation and butchering of Africa to share among themselves and cut Africa into pieces, you know, into small, small units of countries. Mm -hmm. How come that after balkanizing Africa, they realized the need for a European Union, where all the small, small existing European countries, you know, came together as one block after balkanizing Africa. Okay? And since then, if we are honest with ourselves in our analysis, we'll see that the part of the major reason why Africa has not been able to unite as one entity, as we have the European Union, is orchestrated and, you know, sponsored from outside. Even in the case of Zimbabwe, Robert okay. Mugabe. Now, because... In the case of Sudan, also Al Bashir, and they the ones that really cause the now, trouble. Now, now even the, you, if even if the if protests you, in Algeria are, are the ones right responsible. If you check, if yes. you check, my brother, if you check, go deep into the course of those troubles in those countries. I am not saying that you know our leaders, because they share their own greater percentage of the blame. All right, but. If, let's, you, you, are, you, are, you are talking of, you know, Zambia, you are talking of uh, Kaunda, mm -hmm. you are talking of the rest of them, mm -hmm. okay? But what happened to Gaddafi? Why are we not citing that? Mm -hmm. Gaddafi that stood for African Union, the unity of Africa, mm -hmm. Africa speaking with one voice, Africa having one currency, Africa, you know, behaving like the European Union. What happened to him? 
All right. Corruption. Okay. Corruption. Now, corruption. Who is not corrupt? I'll come back to you on so that. Corruption. <laughs> you know, this, this, this is this is the argument that well, we the solution this, the, that that we use. <laughs> you know, when we self defeat ourselves. Okay. We okay. defeat ourselves. Yes. Right. So 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 you buy in what yeah. another person says about you, and that was why I started from even the type of politics that we practice. Before the advent of, you know, democratic practice in, the, in line with the Western pattern mm. was African communities, African states, after African, you know, entities. Did they not have government, governance Good structures? Question. Good question. That Good question. For them. We'll come back to that. Okay. We'll come back to that. Now, Alex, you've heard uh, 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 three of them. The, the, they were spoken from different angles. Uh, some of their points intertwine why some are totally opposite. Now, uh, he, he gave an example of Gaddafi. He said, I didn't talk about Gaddafi because we all know the story of what really happened to Gaddafi. Now, take a look at other countries. The way our leaders now choose to hold on tight to power. You get to hear a president serving for more than two decades. You get to hear a president almost died in office, some died in office. You get to hear a president reading, but doesn't want to let go of power. Are these a symptom of neocolonialism or just an African thing? That's why I said at the beginning, uh, democracy does not allow such, but not democracy in the way it's been practiced in Africa. You know, most times democracy in Africa are military or dictatorship in disguise. You know, but they come under the tag. You see, when a junta, a military junta who has ruled for some particular time, it would self-transform to a so-called democratic leader in order to perpetuate himself in power. So th that's why I said the book does not only stop at the table of the colonial master, but also the way we are able to carry out carry ourselves. First and foremost, when we talk about Africa, what do we really mean? You know, Africa is not as homogeneous as people would want us to think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about sub-Saharan Africa? Or, because when you look at North Africans, they only agree to be Africans when it's convenient for them. They don't really see themselves in that manner. They prefer more to tag with the Arab League, mm -hmm. you know? But when it's very convenient and all that, then the issues of unity, you see there are some certain factors that makes it even difficult. You have issues about xenophobia. Uh, you have issues, you know, when you try to compare two things that are not similar, you, you, you fall into an error. You know, you want to f faction African Union in the, way, the same way you'd have the European Union. Meanwhile, some very important, integral, delicate issues like corruption, mismanagement of the economy, and all that, you know, this is the only continent where you would have uh, people get to the top of position not based on merit, based on quota system. So the, the, the factors are very numerous. And we would see that it's been so many years after colonialism. I know that after independence, there were some certain traps and strings that ensure that it was difficult through loans, through all manners of agreement, that it became very difficult for Africa to operate really independently. But I think it's high time we stop the blame game. It's over. Nigeria is 59 years. 59 years after independence. And you are still pushing, pushing back, blaming this, blaming that. So I think it's, it's both, both sides. Both sides have a, part, a role to play, <laughs> part of the blame. Yes. Part of the blame, the blame game. Oh. Anyway, we want to go for a break. When we return, we're going to talk more on this issue. Neocolonialism and African politics, understanding the narratives, what in the world is really happening to our politics in Africa. Do stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is Africa Discourse. Mind you, you can join us on Twitter 
at um, RTV Radio NG Tweet to talk about these issues as they emanate. Or you can follow me also on our personal Twitter handle at um, Marshall Wilson. Get interactive. You can you know, get a bouquet, Go TV channel 107, Star Times channel 130. You get to see what we're doing in case you have suffering for like, you know, power outage. All you need to pick up your smartphone, log on to www.itvradionigeria.com forward slash live. You see whatever we're doing there and all our current affairs programs, they are there in our YouTube channel. Just log on to youtube.com forward slash ITVRadioNG. You get to see all our current affairs program, TMI. I forgot this course, International Forum, uh, flip side, it's minutes Nigeria, you know, business this week, you just name it. They are just on our YouTube channel for you to go view. You like, you share your opinions, and of course, you share your views. Today is all about neocolonialism and African politics, and I guess they are divergent in their views, understanding the narratives. Now, from what they are doing, so we just can't seem to shake off from the April Spring uh, uh, of our colonial masters because the string is so, so tight, it's so, so strong. What do we do to break free? But for like what you said, it's an African thing, not even a colonial uh, uh, master thing. So how do we really shake out of it? The greatest kind of, I need the endorsement of this country, I need the endorsement of this president. If you take a look at the Anglophone uh, 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 countries, this seems to be what they are uh, willing to do with ease. The Francophone also, according to, uh, is it Chima or Honorable Agarizei Dubo, they are still very much on the ground. Start Africa, the start start of the April Spring of Colonial Masters. Masters. How can we break free out of this? We know all of this. These are realities. But there are other set of alternative realities which we refuse to patronize. We chose to stay glued <coughs> with the excuse factor so as to not shed our own lack of resolve from pre scrutiny. Africa, when people speak about Africa, they speak as if Africa existed before the colonial men came. No, Africa was the creation of the colonialists. There was no, there was no Africa as a nation before they came, that they now divided. We're talking about they came and Bokanese Africa. Was there, was there a single Africa as a people before the white men came? No. They were in intertribal uh, uh, wars in Africa. Even Africa was more divided. Africa as a people, as a country, were more divided before the coming of the colonialists. The Benin will fight the robots. The robots will fight the Shekiris. So there was but we fight, uh, le, uh, what do you call them? Even Modaka Kerifer, you see, there was this confusion. Territory were not as, as, uh, as we think it was. Mm. The might was right in Africa. People were, there was war of conquest. The Benin Empire spread from here to Lagos, then at the point of Dahomey. That spread was not because the Dahomeyans want to be part of it. They were conquered, they also colonized. There was internal colonialism in Africa before the, the, the external colonialism came. The, the Nupes, the Tivi, the Jukuns, they were fight among the, those themselves, regional war, ethnic wars. The South African, the Zulus, and the, they, were, they were wars there. Swahilis. Yeah, they were always at war. They carry all of them, the different tribes. You have kings in kingdom in Africa. And these kings wage war against other kingdom. They, Take beauty. They, they, in fact, they were warriors. They were celebrated according to their exploits in the field of battle. They were fighting among themselves. So the idea of a single Africa never existed. All right. Now they came, they <coughs> created even bigger units out of the smaller African units. You know how they created Nigeria, for instance. Within Nigeria, you would have had Ibo nation, you had the Shakiri nation, the Benin uh, Oya Empire, and all of that. So they created bigger geographical entities mm. out of what they meant for their administrative convenience. Mm. Ghana was not there before they came. You have a Ghana Empire. Ghana Empire was not the country you are seeing there. And it was not a nationality. They waged they wage war of conquest. The Mali Empire. They were conquering other territories. So it was that they agreed to be one. There was no agreement. Oh, it was quest. Now, Africa keeps telling you the colonial thing and all of that. The French people have their technology. 
That is their, that is their strength. If you look at the Boers, the South Africans, where the white men came and settled and became indigenous, indigenous people, after hundreds of years. If you look at the level of advancement now, technological in South Africa, it's traceable to those white who settled there. So colonialism would have been a total cost. There is also blessing associated with it. All right. They came with their own idea and technology. We ought to have built on that. The roads, the bridges, the, the rail, the rail, those people constructed, the colonial constructed. Some of them are still standing today. But here we are in Africa, as we speak now, when they construct roads, it goes by within three days. Mm. Who is behind that? We have better technology now. I told you that they were patronizing, they were merit conscious. They were interested in standards. Even though you say it was for their personal consumption, every human being must have selfish interests. That is natural. All right. But then, out of that, your selfish are you, are, is anybody benefiting from that, your, the, the product <coughs> of your selfishness? If you construct rail because you, are, you want to have a good rail for yourself, you won't patronize the rail the land alone. If okay. you, there was, uh, they had a world generating electricity during that time. But today, I think we are virtually living on generator. So we cannot blame them. We cannot uh, blame them. We should blame ourselves. All yeah, right, honorable. Uh, you, know, I, I, you know, honestly, I, I draw an inference from you. Because there was no Africa until they came to create, they created Africa. No, they, they, they also, they, they also organize Africa. You know, see, listen. <laughs> Let's not even dwell on that. Mm. Let's not even dwell on that. Nigeria will be 59 mm. tomorrow. I always tell people there is, it is natural to grow old, natural. Mm. But it is by choice that you grow up. There is even between growing old and growing <laughs> up. No. Nigeria is growing old, yes, at 59. But we're, we're, we're both grown up. We haven't. You know, we are still, we, are, we, we have not grown up at all. We are still, we have chosen to remain where we were. You know, there's a difference between where you are and where you should be. Not, not, not where you want to be, where you should be. Yeah, ought to be. So very basically, we are not where we should be actually because we are still at, at 59. I agree with him. If a man decided to put you on the floor, and it released you 59 years ago, and you are still on the floor. <laughs> it's not the man's fault. Because we, we, we have systemic failure in Africa, in Nigeria. Leadership failure. You can, why, why, why would a man, for instance, steal close to 10 billion naira? I mean, he has a mental problem. What about the man in Cameroon? Yes. 90 something. He's still killing yes. the men in power. So, very yeah. basically, I think there is. There is, you know, there's mental slavery. There's mental slavery. So for me, I still think we must tell ourselves that we want to grow up. And once you grow up, then of course a lot of things will come to play. Africa, as it were, every country in Africa, we have we, we have the same systemic failure. I mean, you talked about somebody staying in power for 20, 20 years, still wanting to remain in power, even though even though people are saying go. You force your way by enemies to remain. And I like to say this here. I mentioned that you say, okay, let us be nationalistic. Yes, yeah, fine, but let us be more politically conscious. Conscious. Mm. Once we start to become politically conscious mm. and socially conscious, and of course we now understand that ah, this is how we should go. National, okay, let's be nationalistic in our approach, fine. But let us also be politically conscious. So I know the day we can also be interested in how we are being ruled by our people. Because most times, they, they, we celebrate, using your words, me, mediocrity. Mm. The man just comes in there, you know, he, by any means, you know, gets into power, and he chooses to put you perpetually on the floor. As long as you can keep healing him. Be lawyer. Yeah, yeah, he puts Negative the floor. Be lawyer. So very basically, I think by the time we become extremely conscious politically, we cannot tell ourselves, ah, if I know, you know, enough of this, let us now, so that we can on our own, Advance, move forward, because we we must not continue to celebrate people who don't have anything to offer to us. So we must tell ourselves, let us, according to my friend, emancipate uh, ourselves from mental slavery. All right. At the end of the day, we cannot understand where we should be going. All right, but it's Chima, it's like you have a different opinion. <laughs> you see, there are easy way analysis. Okay. Now, when we talk about system, systemic failures, 
see because perhaps because I'm privileged to have had interactions with different kinds of settings. Okay, I want to see things maybe slightly different from others. When we talk about, you know, our people who rule and want to die and those that died on the seat of power, you know, whether that we can say is externally induced. I ask you, go and investigate. Who gives those persons support? We were discussing, uh, is it uh, Mugabe here? Yeah. <laughs> Who were the people that were backing him up? Okay? So, at times, when we say, for instance, when we say our votes don't count, what makes our votes not to count? Is it because if we vote, it will not be counted? Or because at the end of the day, we have seen this happen in this country, okay? When Nigerians are crying, the so-called maybe observers or those from, you know, outside are telling us, well, even though we agree it was flawed, but, you know, you just have to manage it. So what is that? When their interest, why did they go after the real nationalists that had the pan-Africanism vision? Why did they not allow them to try? Because it is easy for us to just say it is our own people, it is ourselves. That is, that is an easy way out. Who allowed the Indians? Who allowed the Chinese? No, 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 the point here is this. While I agree totally, see, nobody will liberate you except yourself. Yes, you find it. You find it. Okay? Yes. But if you don't know who is holding you, which is the problem that Africa has, this is the problem that African leadership has, we pretend not to know yeah, where yeah. our trouble is coming from. So they know and, and that I say pretend. Yeah, yeah. So they continue to call the shots, and then we pretend that we are the ones that are in charge. Yeah. When we right. are actually not. So that if we know that, look, no country on this planet Earth is self-sufficient. No. Including America. America has something that it will need from Nigeria. Sure. Nigeria has what it will need from Ghana. The day we realize it, and we realize that, except we say, look, we are equal. Since you say we are, you know, independent countries, we are sovereignties. So sovereignty means equality. Equal so we should be equal, and we must do our, you know, political business equally. All right, you, you uh, can, Alex. <laughs> you can be equal, but not the same. <laughs> Alex, you can be equal, but not the same. Of course, you can be equal. You will know where your strength is. Yes, you yes, you know. All right, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Alex, we're going to have the last line on this. I mean, how can we really do? Because many points have been given for a gaze and, of course, in between. How do we get out of this apron string, so to speak? First and foremost, is to admit the reality. We have to be pragmatic that. Um, they, they are actually apron strings, and they come in various disguise. Sometimes in disguise of foreign loans, aid, they come even in disguise of foreign direct investments. You think they are helping you, but they give you stringent con conditions sure, sure. that would always tie you to them. Sure, but up. enough of excuses. Like, I like what uh, my other colleague said. What, what happened to the Chinese and the Indians? They were able to break away. They took their, their destinies in yeah. their own hands. So the high time we started doing that, the better for us. Thank you so, so much, gentlemen. As you can see, our time is completely up. Let me use that phrase, so to speak. I really appreciate your wonderful analysis. 
and this discourse is a continuum because we keep seeing, keep observing Africans, the way they run their politics, the way they do their thing. People are still blaming the colonial masters, how the colonial masters uh, underdeveloped Africa. You can see books like that, but you gave strong examples of countries that choose to liberate themselves. Is it that where our leaders go to spend their vacation? If they really hate, uh, yes. why are they not staying at home? Yeah, the one right. the colonialism. All right, thank you, so thank you, thank you. And of course, happy birthday, Nigeria. Turning 59 tomorrow is not a main feat. Mind you, if you don't fix this country, nobody else can. Fix it. Were you fix there? Fix it. Were you, were you there? Or we remain the way we are. Bye for now. Were you, were you there?